What's up guys, it's Kyle here, and in this week's video I'm going to teach you how to make a program that measures the instantaneous rotation speed of an EV3 motor. This week's video is kind of like a complement of last week's video. So last week I taught you how to make a program that measures the motor's average rotation speed over the entire length of time that the program runs for. In this week's video, it's instantaneous rotation speed. So that means that we're going to be taking the rotation speed at any one instant. So it doesn't matter what happened a second before we measured the rotation speed. It's concerned with what's happening right now. If you want to think about it in terms of calculus, this is going to be taking the derivative of the motor's rotation. Now, just like last week's program, the really awesome thing about the program we're making this week is it requires no extra hardware. All you need is the EV3 brick and the motor because we're going to be using the timer built into the EV3 brick and the rotation sensor built into the motor to measure this rotation speed. So no additional hardware is necessary. The first program that we're going to make today measures the motor's instantaneous speed in degrees per second. And I start with degrees per second just because there's a few less steps involved as compared to programming RPM. So the first thing you need to do is just turn on whatever motor you want to measure the speed of. So I'm measuring the speed of the motor in port A and I'm just going to set it to uh, continuously rotate at 75% power. You don't need any other initialization so we can jump right in and get to the loop. Now the first thing you want to put in the loop is the motor and time resets. So take out a motor rotation block and set it to reset the degrees in the motor that you're measuring, so in my case port A, and also reset one of the timers. You'll notice that if you watch my last week's video on average uh, motor speed that these resets go outside, whereas opposed to the instantaneous motor speed we're putting the resets on the inside and that's because we want to get a snapshot of what the motor's rotation speed is right now at this instant, hence the name instantaneous. After these resets, we're going to put a short wait block. So we're going to set it to whatever you'd like, but I think one half second is a good amount of time. And after that, then we're going to put yet another motor rotation block and set it to measure degrees. And we're going to put another timer block, and this is going to measure the time in seconds. So if you think about it, we're resetting the motor and the timer, waiting for 0.5 seconds, and then measuring the, the change in degrees and the change in time over that interval. And that basically gives us the, a snapshot of what the motor's speed was over that 0.5 second interval. Then what we're going to do is take out a math block, set that to divide, like so, and we're going to divide the number of degrees by the number of seconds, hence degrees per second. Take out a text block so we can display this to the EV3. So type in the label you want to display alongside of the uh, speed information, so in my case degrees per second, and we can take the result and plug it into the B input of this text block. And then finally take a display block and set this to display text, uh, set this to wired text, and then you can plug in the result of this text block into the text input of this display. And if you'd like to learn more about using these text blocks and these display blocks, see my tutorial on uh, EV3 display blocks that I'm linking to right here. Anyway, this is the completed instantaneous motor speed program in degrees per second. With this program up and running, you can see that the motor's instantaneous speed is being displayed on the EV3 screen in degrees per second. You can tell this is instantaneous speed because the moment after I stall the motor and stop it from spinning, the speed in degrees per second instantly drops down, as opposed to the average speed which takes a while to drop down. Then when I let go of the motor and allow it to start spinning again, the rotation speed instantly jumps back up. Now that we have a program that measures the motor's rotation speed in degrees per second, I'm going to show you instead how to measure the rotation speed in RPM, or revolutions per minute. And because much of the programming is the same, we're going to start off with the program we just finished and convert it from there. So the first thing you want to do is go over to this motor rotation block and change it to measure rotations you're going to keep it plugged into this division block though, like this. So now it's calculating motor rotations divided by seconds. Instead of plugging the result directly into the text block, we're going to add one more math block in between. Set this to multiply, 
and then set the block to multiply the input by 60. So we're going to take this result, multiply it by 60, then take the result of this math block and put it as the B input for the text block. So now it's measuring rotations, dividing by the number of seconds, then multiplying by 60 to get to minutes, because there are 60 seconds in one minute. Lastly, you may want to change the text that's displayed next to the rotation value. So I'm going to change this to, say, RPM, and now our new instantaneous RPM program is ready to go. With this new program running, we can now see that the instantaneous motor speed in revolutions per minute, or RPM, is now displayed on the EV3 screen. One really useful application of the instantaneous rotation speed program is as a new method of stall detection. So as you can see, I have my instantaneous degrees per second program, and I've adapted it to detect a motor stall, where I'm taking the result of this division block, and instead of just printing it to the EV3 screen, I've also taken this result to a compare block. So if the rotation speed drops less than uh, 10 uh, degrees per second, then it's going to cause this loop to exit and we're also going to change the brick lights to red, stop the motor, and play a little sound file. So that's a way that you can set it up for detecting a motor stall. Here is our motor stall detection program in action. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.